Hi, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Valley Talk, virtual Valley Talk, Maps of the Wissahickon. I'm Ruffian Tittman. I'm the Executive Director of Friends of the Wissahickon, and we have a great program tonight. But before we get started, I just wanted to let everyone know that we are recording the program. And so you should feel free to turn off your camera if you'd like. Also, I'm sure many of you, like me, will have loads of questions about what we're going to see and hear tonight. And we'd love it if you would enter your questions in a form, which we're putting in the chat right now. And uh, we will get to those questions at the end of our program, uh, unless there's something that I feel inspired to interrupt and ask as we move along. So a little bit about the friends. We are talking about ourselves on our next slide, if we could advance. <laughs> to the next slide, <laughs> which tells you all great things about FOW, founded in 1924 with the support of many, many members, um, as well as our official uh, partner, Philadelphia Parks and Recreation. And we would, join, we would invite all of you to join us as uh, stewards and support our conservation mission. And you can find out more about that and many exciting events like our All Trails Challenge, on our website, FOW.org. If you're just interested in the ATC, atc.fow.org. Wonderful. So tonight we have uh, a great program with a good friend of the Wissahickon, as well as many other organizations and people and nonprofits across the city, Brad Mall. And Brad is a writer and photographer who's appeared in the Philadelphia Inquirer, Philadelphia Magazine, and numerous other publications. And he's the founder and editor of Philly Skyline and was for years a contributing editor to Hidden City Philadelphia. He currently serves as the communications manager for Mount Airy CDC. And most notably in our opinion here at Friends of the Wissahickon is the editor of our Instagram account since 2016. And he also notes he has had an obsession since childhood with maps, which we're gonna really see evidence of tonight, everyone. So welcome Brad. Thank you, Ruffian. You are um, most welcome. <laughs> uh, it is true. I do have a bit of an obsession with maps. Uh, I love maps. And when I was five years old and my friends were playing with GI Joes, I didn't understand because I was on the floor with maps and atlases. Uh, that is a true FOW story. has a, a bit of a thing for maps as well. I mean, we a bit of a one-track mind, map of the Wissahickon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we'll be talking about some of these maps of the Wissahickon. In fact, we'll, in Only fact that's all, of the that is all we'll be talking about. Exactly. Um, so if I may, um, I will start these slides. Um, there we go. Please welcome me. <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, thank you. You're thank you very much. Uh, but seriously, uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, this is the acknowledgments slide. Um, thank you, everybody, for, for, for joining tonight. Um, it's, it's really cool to talk about maps, <clears throat> talk about maps of the Wissahickon, um, and to see so many people out here tonight. Um, a, particular shout out to uh, volunteer crew leaders. Um, so uh, I, 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 before I get started, I, I wanted to thank a, a small handful of people who uh, helped me make this thing happen tonight. Um, obviously, FOW Ruffian and the amazing staff of Friends of the Wissahickon. Um, but uh, also uh, Alex Bartlett from Chestnut Hill Conservancy. Uh, he's the archivist there and uh, FOW's archives are hosted with Chestnut Hill Conservancy. And, and he he's was the a, he archivist was... for the Wissahickon collection at yeah. the Chestnut Hill Conservancy, a good friend and partner of FOW. And Alex um, really uh, is able to find a lot of great treasures there. Uh, so folks should also reach out to Alex if they're interested in Wissahickon collection or things related to Chestnut Hill. That's right. And if, if you go to chconservancy.org, uh, they have a digital archives that you can search through. And there's tons of great photos from 
you know, as, as far back as the, the 17 and 1800s, lithographs, drawings, things like that. But then there are also uh, photos that were donated uh, by people who just donated their whole collections, be it like glass slides or 35 millimeters, um, or even digital photos as recently as like 2002, stuff like that. So um, a lot of really cool stuff uh, in Chestnut Hill Conservancy just uh, did their annual, uh, their fifth annual Night of Lights on Germantown Avenue uh, when some, uh, some of the projections include FOW and Wissahickon scenes. Um, that is a great event <clears throat> for the Northwest and the Wissahickon. Uh, the Free Library of Philadelphia, uh, print and pictures, and um, some of uh, the, the, the Free Library obviously is an amazing resource, but Alina Josen, Megan McCall, and Laura Straffolino really helped um, populate uh, this slideshow with some really cool archival, archival stuff. Uh, the Fairmount Park Archives, uh, Rob Armstrong, uh, my friend, and uh, like amazing historian uh, really helped uh, get some of these things together uh, along, uh, shout out to Teresa Stolman as well. Uh, Amy Ricci at Historic Rittenhouse Town uh, and philogeohistory.org, which we'll get into uh, in a little while. <clears throat> um, that is an amazing resource that um, you all have to check out. Uh, it's philogeohistory.org. Um, so the, the background image that you see here, uh, was a survey that was done in, I, I think it was six, uh, 1867, just before the, the formation of the Fairmount Park Commission. And the first official map of the Wissahickon Just give us a second. It looks like Brad's been muted, folks. That's a great map. And I'm hoping that we, oh, he's back. Yay. Who muted me? Um, <laughs> OK, so well, anyway, uh, this is the first slide, so to speak. Uh, so everyday maps, I just want to kind of orient us um, to where we are uh, using the tool that probably most of us, or at least most of us who are into maps, use on a regular basis. Um, and for me, that is Google Maps. Um, I imagine a lot of us use Google Maps, be it uh, on your phone, on your desktop, and your GPS, like at, and, you know, if, if you're driving somewhere or, or even walking or what have you. Um, so, you know, so here, here, here we are. This is the 2021 version of the Wissahickon Valley Park, as noted by can, can you all see my, my cursor as I do the little circle thing? I can. Um, okay. So, so this is 1,800 acres of park here. Um, and this is what we know as the Wissahickon now. So you've got uh, Henry Avenue over here. Um, you've got the, the Wissahickon Environmental Center and Dora Natural Area here. Um, this little wing here, this is the Cresham Valley, um, which has uh, expanded quite a bit. Uh, hasn't expanded quite a bit, but its use has expanded <clears throat> over the last 10 years or so, uh, largely led by the Friends of the Cresham Trail, who are a partner of FOW um, to help build trails uh, and so forth. Uh, you've got Carpenter's Woods over here, and then down here, you know, this is uh, Rittenhouse Town and um, Clifford Park, where Thomas Manchin is. And then you can follow the Wissahickon Creek all the way down to the mouth at the Schuylkill River. Um, and, and so I, I just, you know, again, just to orient ourselves uh, using uh, Google. Um, <clears throat> Google Maps recently uh, updated the way that you can view the layers. Um, you've always been able to view uh, the satellite view. So this is the satellite view. I think that's cool if you kind of dial down a little closer, it looks a little busy at this layer. Um, my personal favorite is the terrain layer, which is sort of the general basic view of, you know, of street maps and parks and so forth. But you have the terrain, which is super helpful if you're planning a map, uh, planning a hike, uh, or a bike ride or that kind of thing. Um, and then 
they recently made it easier to find the, the biking routes too. So um, I just wanted to mention that because it's kind of a cool little feature. Um, <clears throat> and then this here, uh, an, another one that uh, we all, it, we're, a lot of us uh, may use on a regular basis. This is all trails. Um, and this here is just a, a sample um, hike that, that I have uh, drawn up here. Uh, it's three miles long that starts and it's a loop hike that starts and ends at the Wissahickon uh, Transportation Center here. Uh, goes up to 100 steps, kind of goes around the Hermit's Cave and then goes up to Lover's Leap and then back down on the, uh, the paved trail here, the, the, uh, the Wissahickon Bike Trail. Um, but I just, I just wanted to mention all trails because uh, when, you, when you map something like this out, it gives you the elevation, uh, which is kind of cool. I was going to say, this is a great one for getting in not only your steps, but also your staircase climb achievements on your Fitbit or other tracker. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, and Strava does that too, but, Stra but Strava records you as you do it. Um, mm -hmm. And it, you, you may be able to plan ahead on Strava. I know how to do it on all trails, which is why I showed that there. Um, but here's what people want to really see. Right? Here's what people want to see. Um, so this is the historic maps section. Um, and so let's just get right to it here. Um, all the way 1687. back in 1687, uh, Thomas Holm was the first surveyor general of Pennsylvania. He was uh, assigned that role by William Penn. This is the earliest days of European settlement in this area. Obviously, uh, the Lenapes were here a lot uh, longer before any people of European descent were here, um, but this is the written history that we have. Um, and so, you know, from the area, from the era of William Penn, Thomas Holm was his surveyor, uh, giving his name to Holmesburg, uh, neighborhood of Philadelphia. Um, and uh, the original, th there's an earlier version, I think in 1682, uh, it is the original city of Philadelphia, um, which is just this little this little spot here, which is basically what we know as Center City. Um, it was Vine Street to South Street, which was then called Cedar Street, and then River to River. That little rectangle with the five uh, public squares, that was the original city of Philadelphia. But Pennsylvania uh, was, you know, what what is what would become the Commonwealth. And Originally, it was Philadelphia County, uh, Chester County, and Bucks County. Um, and so Philadelphia County went all the way out here. Uh, they eventually broke off Montgomery County from Philadelphia County. And Philadelphia, uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the year, but uh, Philadelphia County and city uh, have been 135 square miles there, uh, since whatever year that was, uh, I, I think the 1700s. Um, but, uh, but, but anyway, th so this, this is 1687 here, and this is uh, the map of improved part of Pennsylvania of America divided into counties, townships, and so forth. Um, and we see here across the river, the part of West New Jersey. Um, but uh, right smack in the middle of this map, you have the Schuylkill River. Um, I believe this is the Brandywine River over here. This is the Shamany Creek. Uh, but you follow the Schuylkill up from the Delaware. And then right here, this is, uh, this is the Wissahickon, which is labeled as Whitpain's Creek. So it was, you know, at, in the earliest days of um, European settlement, it was named for the guy who named it, Whitpain. Um, and eventually we came back to, to Wissahickon. But you can see it kind of coming up through here. Uh, the German town, the German township is right here, and this is the Roxborough township. Um, so pulling it in a little closer here, um, this again is the Wissahickon Creek. There's that Whitpain Creek label. Um, this little zigzag is the Monoshone Creek, which Lincoln Drive follows now. Uh, this is the Cresham Creek. Um, and it's just kind of cool to see this from the perspective of 1687, because um, not much has changed in the course of this creek's flow. 
we've only been here for 340-ish years, and uh, it's taken millions of years to get it here. So we are, we are a blip on this map. Uh, so we'll skip ahead here to 1777. Um, the Battle of Germantown, uh, the, the centralized fighting happened at Clibden, the Chew House at Johnson Street and Germantown Avenue. Um, but the Wissahickon Creek was marginally involved. Um, as you can see here, um, General Armstrong brought uh, some American troops down uh, Manitana Road, AKA Ridge Avenue. Uh, there were Hessian soldiers uh, here waiting at the mouth of the Wissahickon Creek, a German redoubt, I think is how you pronounce that. Um, there are supposedly ruins of that that still exist on the lower end of um, what, what I call the East Falls Trail, the trail that goes between Wissahickon Avenue and Ridge Avenue east of Lincoln Drive. Uh, that's very popular with mountain bikers. Um, but, uh, but, but it's kind of cool to, to think of the Wissahickon Creek in the context of the American Revolution. Uh, at, at 10 Box, at the uh, beginning or end of uh, Forbidden Drive, there is a plaque there that talks about the Battle of Germantown. And then in Vernon Park, in Germantown, uh, there is a Battle of Germantown monument that has a bronze relief uh, of basically the, the whole Northwest uh, Philadelphia. And right in the middle of it is the meandering Wissahickon Creek. And it's kind of cool because you can touch it and feel the, uh, the topography. Uh, so I recommend checking that out in Vernon Park if you've never seen that before. A very fine park. Indeed, Vernon Park, folks. So if you haven't been, it's worth a visit. It, it is. A, and the park itself. That's right. And, uh, and, and it's uh, Rittenhouse Street is the um, sort of the, the northern border of the park. And if you follow Rittenhouse Street, it's only three blocks or so to Sailor Grove, which uh, is one of the, you know, which is sort of like Germantown's main entrance point to the Wissahickon. Um, which is kind of cool to, you know, again, it's, it's geography, it's maps, you put that into perspective. If you, if you spend a lot of time in Germantown and a lot of time in the Wissahickon, you don't often connect Vernon Park and the, and, and the Wissahickon, but they're only a few blocks apart. Uh, so, so here, this is 1843. Um, the city slash county of Philadelphia. Um, as a matter of fact, this is the county of Philadelphia in 1843. You can see it broken down into the townships. Um, and so, you know, there's King Sessing, Passyonk, Moyamensing, um, you, you know, and, and it goes up into the Northeast here, Upper Dublin, Northern Liberties was very, was very big. Uh, Blockley was most of West Philadelphia. And then up here, you have Roxborough Township and Germantown Township. And then this little thing here is the borough of Maniunk, which by 1843 was already a functioning mill town. Hmm. And then again, uh, this right here is Center City, uh, Philadelphia, which was the city of, of Philadelphia at the time. So then we'll zoom it in a little closer here. Um, again, this is Roxborough and Germantown Townships. And it's kind of interesting, like in, in our modern context, we kind of picture the Wissahickon Creek as, or the Wissahickon Park uh, as the big divide, uh, yeah. if you will, on the two sides of the Northwest. Mm -hmm. But as it was drawn up in the 1680s, um, it was surveyed in a straight line. And so you have this big straight line, which actually to this day still affects the uh, eighth council manic district and the fourth council manic district. Yes. So it's 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 interesting that there are people who live on the wet uh, the uh, the the east side of Wissahickon Creek in you know uh, Mount Airy in Germantown, uh, but who are in. Uh, Curtis Jones's district, uh, as opposed to Cindy Bass's district. And that is because of this line. And this line at the time was the township line. Um, <clears throat> and there was a township line road that was built. And that township line road 
is now called Wissahickon, Wissahickon Avenue, uh, but it used to go all the way down here. And of course, when it got into the topography of the Cresham Creek and then crossing Wissahickon Creek, you know, it of course zigzagged a little bit, but, but the idea was that it followed a straight line. And then when you come back over on the Roxborough side, so the white trail, if you're at Cresham Creek and you're going north, um, the white trail basically follows the, the path of the township line. It crosses Valley Green Bridge, goes up Forbidden Drive, and then right near the McGarge Dam, there's a little spot where it veers up. McGarge? The, left. Mag the McGarge Dam. That's right, McGarge or McGargy. Okay. Um, we, we, the, the choice is yours on how to pronounce that. Um, and, and so it, it bears left and goes up toward uh, Summit, uh, Summit Avenue. And then when you get into that part of Roxborough, like the Andorra area, you have Old Line Road and thus the name Old Line Road. It, it follows that same axis um, that is seen here in 1843. Um, and then here it is just a little bit closer. And so it's, it's just kind of, it's kind of interesting that that straight mm -hmm. line is the, 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 the old, old divide, the dividing line between Roxborough and Germantown, but the Wissahickon Creek just sort of splits right through it. So here, uh, uh, this is 1847. Um, this is the, I, I like this because it's the map of the circuit of 10 miles around the city of Philadelphia, which again is center city here, uh, but they drew a 10 mile line. Um, and this, um, this is from the free library site. And if you go to the free library site, um, you can view it in a, like an online viewer where you can like zoom, 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 and like go, go down and see, you know, your, your neighborhood if you, if you want to do that. So, you know, again, this is 1847. You've got Maniunk here as a borough. Um, uh, let me see. You, you've got Mount Airy here as just like a little section <clears throat> of Germantown, which it still was at the time. Um, and, you know, and then you can follow the Wissahickon Creek, um, as it as it goes out through the uh, you know just through the landscape there, uh, you, this is labeled Paper Mill Run. Um, that again is Paper Mill Run, aka Monashoni Creek. Um, that is what Lincoln Drive was built on top of. Cresham Creek is still uh, pretty pronounced over here. What about our little friend, the Wingo Hawking? Oh yes, the Wingo Hawking. Uh, the Wingo Hawking, uh, indeed. So Germantown Ave um, kind of follows the ridge between the, uh, the watersheds, um, you know, it loosely follows that. So if you're on the west side of Germantown Ave, the water flows downhill eventually into the Wissahickon Creek, but on the east side, uh, and, you know, and, and to this day, East Mount Airy, East Germantown, a lot of it uh, drains to the Wingo, Wingo Hawking Creek, which then drains to the um, to the Frankfurt Creek. But um, our genius forebears, uh, in the interest of development, buried a lot of waterways across the city, including the Wingo Hawking Creek, um, which you know has had significant consequences: uh, the pollute, polluted water. Um, crazy runoff and, and uh, flash flooding that happens. And then, you know, probably most infamously, the neighborhood of Logan at the Logan Triangle, um, you know, dozens and dozens of houses had to be condemned because they were built on um, marshy land mm -hmm. that was unstable. And all of that goes back to the human treatment of the Wingo Hawking Creek in the late 19th century. Um, and also, before I move this slide, I just wanted to point out that that here um, is Pumpkin Town, uh, the, the Pumpkin Town section of Chestnut Hill, and I sincerely propose that Chestnut Hill bring that back. There must be a Pumpkin Town part of Chestnut Hill. At least for one day a year. <laughs> um, so here is, eight, so this is 1848. Um, this these are two versions of the same thing. This is uh, a plan of the township of Roxborough. 
Uh, I had never seen this map before going to the free library uh, last week. Um, and it's just kind of cool to, uh, you know, again, the, the Roxborough was founded, uh, I think, in 1689 or 1690. Um, so it had been around for a little while, but but here is a you know mid nineteenth century um, look ahead at Roxborough, mm -hmm. um, and so here is just a little bit closer look. Um, this is Ridge Avenue here, so Ridge Turnpike uh, mm -hmm. at the time, and then here is the Wissahickon Creek, and you can see how how they relate to each other, Ridge. Uh, follows the ridge, um, thus the name. Uh, and then down at the bottom of the valley, you have the creek. Um, and, and so here you have Gorgas Lane and mm -hmm. you have Levering Lane, um, you know, and you see all of the, uh, the, the owners, uh, the, the landowners over here. So you know, there are names you might recognize from the neighborhood, you know, Shalkop, Ryder, Smick. Um, but then, you know, these roads, these are sort of, uh, uh, industrial roads that go to industrial concern. So this is 1848, and this is just before uh, Forbidden Drive was built as the Wissahickon Turnpike, which would have come out this way. And so it's really interesting. And the, so the uh, the rock outcrops and the um, you know topography is defined here, and so you can see why the roads go where they go, and mm -hmm. and we even have some of those still today with the Gorgas. Um, the Gorgas Lane sort of access trail that comes down levering. Uh, there is a trail that comes down from that. Um, <clears throat> you know, and then over here you have Livesey. Uh, there was a bridge at the time, which we'll actually see more of shortly. Um, yeah, just, just kind of interesting to see that. And then 1854 was the year of the, the great consolidation of the city. Um, and you can see it over here. It says Consolidated City, Philadelphia. And this one says New Map, Consolidated City, of Philadelphia. So the city and county of Philadelphia became contiguous. Uh, that is your quizzo answer. They are contiguous um, in 1854. Um, and we're the only county like that of the 67 counties in Pennsylvania, um, which the other 66 counties really love about us, especially in Harrisburg. Um, <clears throat> so these two maps here were basically in competition with one another uh, coming out from 1854 with the consolidation and just sort of like a new way to look at uh, the city and these numbered things are the wards. Um, and um, it's kind of interesting that the, you know, Mount Airy Chestnut Hill is still the 22nd ward. Mm -hmm. um, this is just dialed in a little closer on, uh, on one of those. And so again, here is the Wissahickon Creek. This is 1856. So it is before the Fairmount Park uh, commission and land designated as parkland, which is why you have the two townships here, uh, Roxborough and Germantown. And the line that is defined is the, the township line. But you again, you can follow uh, the creek as it goes through here. Um, and you can see a little bit of the topography as the uh, cartographer made. And it's kind of cool to see like in this early 1856, you know, there's an early reference to Andorra here. Um, you've got the Veal Hartwell. Uh, so um, Mr. Hartwell of the Hartwell Mill had a little veal uh, in this area here um, yeah. in, in, in the, the lower end of uh, Chestnut Hill. Uh, and then here, so this is the U.S. Coast Survey, which we, we can see is, is labeled as U.S. Coast. Um, there, the typos were... Uh, no spell check. There was no spell check uh, in, in people writing uh, in fine print. Uh, but the U.S. Coast Survey um, is still used today, like as an official uh wing of the government to survey to survey land and and so this was done in 1863 and this helped inform 
uh, the the formation of the Fairmount Park Commission, at least with regard to the Wissahickon Valley. Um, and then this just kind of gets in a little closer and you can see the details with the trees and, and, and all of that. But um, uh, here again is the township line road. Uh, and and this- and This is, is Wissahickon Avenue now. That's right. So this is Wissahickon Avenue and this is Allen's Lane. So if you're driving on Wissahickon Avenue, you have to make a right. Now you have to turn. <laughs> you have to turn. That's right. You have to turn. But don't try driving straight, folks. <laughs> don't do that. No. Um, but but this is Libsy Lane, and so uh, Libsy Lane is still, um, you know, obviously uh, a road. And this mm -hmm. this there was a bridge at the time, um, which you know, again, so by this time, uh, the Wissahickon Turnpike was built, uh, aka Forbidden Drive now. Um, but it's kind of cool to to see that. Am, am I drawing that? What, <laughs> what is that drawing? How did that happen? Um, well, anyway, so so that set up 1863. This is a great are, one. Not, so, not how I really picture the Wissahickon in my mind. You know, I'm so used to the uh, what I always think of the north south orientation <laughs> rather than the this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that's right. A and very, then, a very fine map. It, it is a very fine map. It is the first official map of the Wissahickon Creek as part of the Fairmount Park system. So this map was adopted um, on the 14th day of April, AD 1868, as noted right here. Um, so 1868, the Wissahickon Valley became part of the Fairmount Park system along with the East and West Fairmount Park, Schuylkill River, protect the watershed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and this was the first version of it. Um, and so here it is just a little bit closer. Um, and again, you can see the names of the landowners. Um, it's, just, it's just really interesting that that you know, that, that even I think still kind of exists to a certain point today, um, although on, on Zillow, it, 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 it is more interested in uh, like uh, appraisal values sure. than, than actual land owners. But, but it is kind of interesting to see. Um, so you've got the written houses here, um, kitchen, kitchen's lane, um, and, and uh, just, you know, some, some other names, Livesey, that you would recognize, uh, you've got uh, John Welsh over here, and John Welsh was a landowner in Mount Airy who donated land uh, for what would become uh, Mom Rinker's Rock and the Toleration uh, William Penn statue. Okay. Um, so, uh, and and then here, uh, at, so you've got the kitchen uh, mill complex and the bridge, uh, but it says Germantown Lane as opposed to Kitchens Lane. Just, you know, and it's, it's kind of interesting to watch how things, uh, how names evolve as you go through time. Um, and note the boundary of the park is expressed thus. Um, <laughs> that, that is the solid, right. the solid line there. And that's and worth so we've noting. Gotten, we've gotten a little bigger, which is good. We have. Um, and we, we have gotten a little bigger and that's and that's like a, a good point because you see the solid line here, mm -hmm. um, the boundary line of the park expressed thus. Um, <laughs> it's just like a ribbon that goes on either side of Wissahickon Creek where, you know, so much land has been donated or acquired to, to make it the park that it is today. And oh, and here's another, uh, the, a, the second spelling, the Magargi mill. So Magarj or Magargi, it really is your choice. Okay. Um, so here is an early park souvenir. I don't uh, think I've ever seen this one before. Yeah, this is a good one. Um, <clears throat> this, is, this is a good one. And I think this one came from the free library as well. Um, this you know, so so Fairmount Park per se was only four years old at this point, and so you have this this uh, this souvenir, this pictorial guide, 
where you've got the map in the middle and then you've got all these little things, um, plenty of things to read about, you know, sites to see uh, and so forth. Uh, one of which is the bridge near the hotel at Valley Green. Um, I, hopefully you can read that. My, my Zoom thing is in the way, the panel, I can't read the whole thing, but it is the most romantic and delightful in the whole valley of the wild and beautiful was a Hicken. Um, and you see the scene with the people on their boats and the Valley Green Bridge in the background. Um, and then this is just zoomed in a little closer uh, because the Wissahickon is is so kind of linear. Um, <laughs> it's just often presented as a linear thing too, um, and so this is just turned on its side. So this is 1872 as an uh, as a nascent uh, Fairmount Park souvenir, and then 1876 was Ooh. peak Philadelphia. Um, the whole country came here to celebrate the centennial of, uh, you know, it really did. Uh, we, we knocked it out of the park with uh, the Centennial Expo and we've been climbing out of the hole ever since, you know, 1926, 1976. Um, we're gonna maybe try again in 2026. We've got a few years to figure out if we wanna get the 250 right. Um, I think there's some folks working on it. There are some folks working on it, uh, there are. So, but, uh, but we got it right in 1876 and Fairmount Park is where uh, the expo was held. The, the grounds were built, you know, in West Fairmount Park. There is this, to this day, the Centennial District Fairmount Park Conservancy um, is- Any great know, houses over there that were built? Yeah, for this? that's right. Yeah, great houses. And um, it's, it's amazing how much stuff we built for this expo and then how much of that we demolished. Um, Philadelphia has been demolishing buildings for a long time. And uh, uh, we, we still have a few that are left over from it. Um, you know, Memorial Hall, obviously the Ohio house and there's a couple other little things uh, around the park that were, uh, that were preserved. But, uh, but the park was, was one of the, you know, sort of central attractions. Like everybody went to the park to see all this stuff, but they went to the park. That was the point. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's why, you know, International Exhibition, 1876, Fairmount Park was sort of a star of that. And the Wissahickon uh, was a part of that as the eight-year-old park. Um, so this is just zoomed in a little closer and you can see that it's still in that early ribbon uh, phase. Um, but 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 even then, so 1876, you you have you know you have the old inns of the park like the Maple Spring Hotel, Wissahickon Hall, um, you know, and so forth. But then you also have other things that are still uh, familiar today, like Lover's Leap, uh, you know, Kel the Kelpius Cave, um, Valley Green, and so forth. Um, and then here, so Fairmount Park uh, and the Wissahickon had been around for a couple decades at this point, and the City Planning Commission was, was looking ahead to the 20th century. And at this time, the park was still pretty much a ribbon, um, and they were looking at ways to develop the city right up to the edge of the park. Uh, I think, fortunately for all of us, uh, the topography kind of prevented that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, you know, so again, like 1896, it's still mostly a linear ribbon sort of thing, but there's a couple little additions um, that have happened since 1868. Um, so right here, um, this right here, the, mm -hmm. uh, the Prowatane family donated the uh, the area around the Hermitage and okay. uh, uh, Hermit Lane. Um, there's like along here, it's it's a little difficult to make out because of the the um, the split of the page. But uh, some the areas along Cresham Creek uh, were some areas along there were were added as well. Um, and as we pull it in a little closer, you can see just how close uh, the development was planned to come. Um, so this is um, so so this is Ridge Avenue here, 
Um, and this is the railroad bridge. Uh, okay. the, one, the 100 steps are about right here. Uh, this is before the 100 steps, just before. Um, but, but you can see, so this is now called Rochelle Avenue. It was huh. called Jeanette, Jeanette Ave at the time. And, and back then, Jeanette Ave was supposed to go the, basically along the edge of the parkland. And there is a Jeanette Street now. Yeah. Um, it's like a mile north of here. And there's, a, you know, where Jeanette Street becomes Green Lane is one of the entrances of the park. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just kind of kind of wild to see that. Um, and then here is like way on the upper, the opposite end of the park. This is Thorpe's Lane, AKA Bells Mill Road. Um, this was the Northern boundary of the park at the time, which is, you know, what this green uh, boundary here is. Um, and then north of this, uh, you see like Henry Houston owned this land and so much of the land. And then over here, the convent of the Sisters of St. Joseph, uh, which is now uh, Chestnut Hill College. Um, and there was the mill race and there was a dam that caused this, this little, uh, this pond right here. Just all kind of interesting stuff. This is Germantown Ave here. Yeah. And then this, this bend still is still there. Um, and then right now, the, the park kind of, this is all Harper's Meadow, um, and this is the Orange Trail as it comes down here. Wow. Uh, this, is a, this is a bit of a wild card. Uh, I just threw this in here because uh, this was at the Fairmount Park archives. Uh, <laughs> I had never seen this before. Uh, as late It was as, never built, never built. Was, that's right, that's right. As, as and, recently, and won't be. <laughs> whoa! Never say never. Never say <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, so this is the 1897 plan to rebuild a bridge at Livesey Lane, where there had been a bridge. Um, but it's, it's it's I don't know, it's just kind of cool. I wanted to throw this in here because like, wow, look at this. I mean, look at that bridge. Look at that bridge. That is a nice bridge that was never built. <laughs> Um, but it, it, it's, this is the map part of it here. So the, the Livesey Lane that we know comes down here and then just sort of dead ends. Um, this says Valley Green Canoe Club, which was the tenant mm -hmm. at Glen Fern up until what, like 2004 or something like that, Ruffian? So, yeah, right? I think that's about right. The early 2000s. Yeah, early 2000s. And so, uh, Glen Fern, uh, now has has a caretaker, uh, Craig and Carol. They're awesome, um, but you know, so Glen Fern. This that's Glen Fern right there, and this is where the road goes. But uh, this says old road abandoned because this is where the old uh, road used to go to cross the bridge, and and then right here is the dam. You can see that this is the Livesey Dam. Um, and this says ruins right here. So they, this is the ruins that still exist um, of from the Livesey Mill complex. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're coming down Livesey Lane, there's a there's a um, a, a fire plug, uh, fire hydrant that looks completely out of place, but it's there because it used to follow a road, and then that road carried the bridge. Uh, over the Wissahickon Creek. And then here it says Wissahickon Drive. Um, just thought I'd throw that in there because it was a cool little addition. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I just wanted to throw one of these in here. Uh, so the Philadelphia Inquirer, the, um, uh, the, you know, the Evening Bulletin, the Public Ledger, there's tons and tons of stories of you know, Wissahickon outings and gallivantings and so forth. Um, if you want to go back and look at them, um, newspapers.com is $75 for a six month subscription. And I highly recommend it. It's very addictive if you like history and reading accounts of the time. It's really interesting. Um, so this trips a wheel, where to go and how to get there. This is from, um, from, August 1897, um, and you see this gentleman with yeah. a scythe uh, guiding this man with a bicycle where to go. There's nothing weird about that. No. <laughs> Lovely with the hick and drive. Yes. 
Um, so yes, lovely Wissahickon Drive. And then this, this is, I mean, this is this is sort of a utilitarian map, but it's kind of cool that like somebody drew this, somebody drew this map and it was reproduced for the Philadelphia Inquirer, which surely had, you know, tens of thousands of subscribers in 1897. And then uh, the dotted line indicates the road that they are suggesting that you ride your bicycle. And so it follows Fairmount Park, the Schuylkill mm -hmm. River Trail, and then comes out um although at the time this is before the paved bike trail so you are riding so your bike on, on, Lincoln, on drive. lincoln drive and we always say don't do that now people <laughs> <laughs> don't that's right uh we, do take the bike path when the when the bridges are reopened which they will be and uh but many of us have enjoyed this this exact uh nearly exact route in any case that's right um it is still to this day uh in most popular, uh, most popular route. So fast forward to 1921, um, and you have the automobile and driving map of historic Fairmount Park. And, you know, you've had all, all of all of the park, Fairmount Park as we know it here. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, with the little side inset of the Wissahickon, um, but you'll recall that 1921 was the year that automobiles and driving were forbidden from Wissahickon Drive, um, thus lend, creating forbidden drive. And so Mr. Uh, Mueller or Muller or Miller, however Mr. <laughs> Mueller pronounces it, um, may have been disheartened that uh, his patrons of his map were not able to drive their automobiles on the upper Wissahickon Drive. However, we are all today very grateful for that. We are most grateful for that. Um, and then here is that inset turned on its side just to get a little uh, a little closer look. Again, this is 1921, and you've got the uh, the MTV community uh, well represented <laughs> over here. Um, it's wow. The X Games. <laughs> watch watch that hill there. Um, this is a fun one. This is. Uh, this is a good one. The map store, uh, 50 North 13th Street, which is now the site of the Criminal Justice Center downtown at 13th and Filbert. Okay. Um, but once upon a time in 1936, it was the map store. And the map store created these types of maps, these illustrated maps um, mm -hmm. all over Philadelphia and the region. And this was its Wissahickon contribution and it's worth uh, observing the expansion of the park space. So the ribbon that we have observed before is now growing. And so you can see the added parkland um, over here above Rittenhouse Town, Bluebell Hill. Um, this area here, which is now the Walnut Lane Golf Course, and then up here, uh, you know, Valley Green, all the way up to Wise's Mill Road. Uh, which is now, you know, the, the yellow trail goes through there, the uh, mm -hmm. Parks and Rec District 4 offices in here. It's kind of cool to see it growing. And then also, um, so Bells Mill Road here, right. you've got this northern edition as well. So Harper's Meadow and what is now the Orange Trail are now officially part of the park also. Great. Um, just a little closer view, um, just to see some of the illustrations. Oh, those shelter, I still have people ask about those. The, um, and I think there's some old postcards as well um, that really show a whole network of these um, above Devil's Pool and uh, kind of magical. Yeah, yeah, there was a wooden bridge that went over Devil's Pool. You've got this gazebo right here, and then there was a second gazebo farther up on top of the um the the um uh, the the hill the big rocky hill that the um shakespeare tablet is on if you go all the way to the top of the hill there was a second uh gazebo that was kind of in the shape of a witch's hat it it just had these like these uh these um these, these log curving log columns that shape that were in the shape of a witch's hat um pretty wild um, and, you know, and again, just, uh, just, just kind of looking over here at, at some of the stuff that uh, was mapped out at the time. So Lindsay Lane was no longer a bridge here, mm -hmm. um, 
but the, but the dam is there. There's Devil's Pool that is marked. Um, <clears throat> some of the other things, uh, so Hartwell Lane, uh, Veal mm -hmm. Hartwell is no longer there, but Hartwell Lane came the whole way down and there was the Iron Bridge, which washed mm -hmm. away in the 1950s. Um, and then this is also kind of interesting too, uh, Wayside Shrine. So Wayside Shrine was something that I believe was dedicated to, it was sort of this Gothic um, stone monument that was dedicated to uh, World War I veterans. Um, I don't know when it was removed from what is now the upper parking lot at Valley Green on the Chestnut Hill side, but that Wayside Shrine is now uh, over in the, I don't, I don't think it's a cathedral village per se, but it, somewhere between the St. Mary's, um, St. Mary's Church and the, uh, the cathedral village over off of Cathedral Road in Andorra, uh, it does still exist. And so it used to be right there. Uh, and there it is, a little closer to the Wayside Shrine. Um, <clears throat> so... This is 1944, and mm -hmm. I, wanted to, I wanted to point this out because this serves as a starting point for the FOW mats. Um, the, I, I, I am sh certain that, that Friends of the Wissahickon had their own maps of the Wissahickon um, prior to this, but the oldest actual map that I could find was from 1946, and it follows most of the contours and lines that are presented here. Um, and, and so I wanted to, you know, show this because this is a, an official Fairmount Park Commission map. Um, so here we go into the... Ooh, there's uh, a few FOW maps. There's a few. Um, yeah, so we'll just get right into it. So this is 1946 here. This is the oldest one that I could find, which is not to say that it is the oldest that exists. It's the oldest one okay. that I could find. Um, but it's kind of cool. So, so the, the, the park is shaded in green here, um, mm -hmm. following basically the exact contours of that previous map, um, mm -hmm. but added with lots of language about Friends of the Wissahickon, flowers, uh, ferns, fauna, geological formations, um, a note about FOW, and then this awesome little bus or train or whatever this is at the, uh, at the train station. <laughs> I think it's a bus. It's you a, think it's a train? It's a, well, it's a it's a future bus. Okay. It's the Jetsons. Right. Um, <clears throat> and then here's here's uh, zoomed in a little bit on that one. You know, so again, this is uh, 1946. Um, we're we're way up on the Cresham Valley where the Cresham mm. Trail goes now, but you have noted here Buttercup Cottage. Uh, lake Surprise, which is less a lake and more of a um, sediment retention area these days, but uh, the dam is still there and waterfall uh, that is really nice. Um, you've got the, this says Chrisheim Memorial. Um, it is the Cresham Memorial, Chrisheim Memorial. It is at the corner of Cresham Valley Drive, which just closed for six months for construction uh, and Germantown Avenue. And then this is kind of interesting across Germantown Ave. It says Woodward Rock Garden. Hmm. So Wood, Woodward, um, I, I think most of us, in, at least in the Northwest, are familiar with the, the Woodward Company, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the property management, um, you know, and so forth. Um, the Woodward Rock Garden was basically a park attraction on a former quarry. Um, and so if you know the, uh, the Chestnut Hill flower shop right on the corner of Crescent Valley Drive and Germantown Ave, yes. just uh, behind that uh, is an old quarry. And there's a set of stairs that, that leads up. I mean, it's all overgrown, of course, but um, that was the Woodward Rock Garden. And if you go to the top of those stairs, you're sort of like at the top of the uh, Chestnut Hill Friends Meeting area. Um, I just thought that was kind of interesting that that Could you was... wave your, your cursor over where you're talking about for folks? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. This uh, this is it right here. Right. Um, so so this is Germantown Ave. Uh, this is Valley Drive. And uh, this is Mermaid Lane right here. So Chestnut Hill Friends Meeting is like right here. 
Um, and it's kind of cool to see the official parkland go over to Mermaid Lane. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so this Woodward Rock Garden is like right here. And, and whoops. And, and you can also see that Lincoln Drive is officially parkland also, the Chestnut Hill part of it. And then it goes up to Pastorius Park here. And I think that's why on, on many parts of Lincoln Drive, you see it designated as uh, Fairmount Park Drive. That's right, that's a good point. Um, so this is 1960. Uh, you follow the same sort of, um, the same contours, but some have been added here, a little bit more parkland in here, and also a little bit more whimsy. So FOW sort of went for it in 1960 <laughs> with the little drawings here. Um, yeah, look at that. Yeah, so I, I, I love this. Do we uh, know who did those? Um, I can't remember if that person is credited. Uh, well, that's OK. I mean, uh, not OK yeah. that if they weren't credited, they should be credited. But OK, <laughs> if we don't know right at this exact moment. Uh, right. But we see also some names, some FOW names here mm -hmm. and <laughs> and addresses on where to reach folks. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, these are great little drawings. It's, it's, it's pretty wild to, to see all these drawings here. And so, you know, again, zooming in a little closer, there's, mm -hmm. here's the Valley Green one. Um, they've got the little milestones uh, along the drive. No motors. Uh, please note, no motors. And then <laughs> over here on Wise's Mill Road. Right, and that's, the, this little inset here of the um, land that just somehow it wasn't consumed. Yeah, <laughs> consumed. that's right. It's, it's still private land, but uh, a very um, sensitive uh, property owner who oh, yes, of course. understands the Wissahickon and makes awesome pottery. Indeed. And yeah. And then this is Morris Glen. I don't know anything about Morris Glen. Um, but there it is on this old map from 1960. Um, just looking at time, I realize it is 6.57. I'll it is. <laughs> try to move this up just a bit. We've, um, hit, we've hit the 70s now. <laughs> yeah, so we're in the 70s, 1974 here. Um, more... Looks uh, like we got a lot bigger up in the northern end. Yep, we are a little bigger here. Um, we have added the Andorra nursery here. Um, so the Andorra nursery is now the Andorra natural area. Um, so a little bit more- 300 part. acres, I think. Sounds right. Yeah, a good addition. Yeah, very, very fine addition indeed. Um, <clears throat> and um, I thought that this was kind of interesting over here in Rittenhouse Town. Uh, you've got the Board of Education Art Colony um, <laughs> all boards of education shit. <laughs> right like cool um and then this thing that says radium spa where where oh, sailor dear. grove is that was I, a I thing have, though that was a thing radium spa yeah what, what does that mean that i don't know what that means it's a spa with radium <laughs> at, at sailor grove <laughs> Perfect. It seems like an unlikely place for it. We'll have to investigate further. We, 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 moving I, along to 1998. Moving along. So 1998. Um, <clears throat> so the shapes are familiar. Uh, the format. The format is also familiar. We're we're still uh, paper maps here. Um, the legend has changed a little bit. Um, we've mm -hmm. got the new the, the new in the 90s tombstone uh, trail posts. Yes. And then in the legend, we note that we have the color trails, the white, the yellow, the orange, the lavender, but then also the red and the blue trails. Okay. So once upon a time, there was a red and a blue trail. And as best as I could tell, the trail through Houston Meadow was called the red trail. Okay. This in 1998, this is, this is my scientific guess. Um, and then the blue trail, um, to me, looks like it was doomed from the start because it looks like <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks like a loop trail from uh, Valley Green Inn, which is uh, right, right here. 
Um, and then it goes up this steep hill here and then right. shares space with the yellow trail here, mm -hmm. goes over, follows Summit Avenue, which we did the Summit reroute a couple of years ago. Right, right. Um, and then comes back down here, back on Township Line Road to Forbidden Really drive. just kind of some connections to the yellow trail from the drive. And also blue is never a great color to use for anything but water on a map. So perhaps that's... <laughs> so I, I don't I don't I don't reckon anybody misses the blue trail too much. Um, so skip ahead to 2001 and uh, we'll see that in those three years since that last map, we've we've adjusted things to what looks pretty familiar today. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Forbidden Drive, Orange, Yellow, White and Lavender Trails and then all other trails. Um, but one thing I thought that was really cool from the 2001 trail is uh, on the back side of the map, yes, I remember you this. have the trail profiles um, with these little landmarks, you know, Wise's Mill, Valley Green, Mount Airy Ave, and so forth, um, that sort of delineate your Forbidden Drive, White Trail, Orange Trail, Yellow Trail, and even Lavender Trail over here. Um, and it has the elevations in there too. So, um, if we're putting, so I'd, I think I'd like to just give a shout out to um, FOW does not have a, a designated map committee anymore, but uh, at this time there there was a, a dedicated group of board members who formed uh, a map committee. Uh, one one who was still on the board when I joined FOW in 2006, John Fuller. He since passed away, but um, were the folks that really went through and and thoughtfully put together things like this. So just a little, little plug for for that effort from our, our board back then um, to do this, because this is a lot of fun. And also um, really helpful in this uh, kind of yardstick way of what you're going to see and how difficult is it going to be to see all that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, you know, thank you for, for, uh, for, for mentioning them. I mean, because this, this, this is a really cool thing. And um, this may be something that we will see again at a future uh, FOW map. Um, <clears throat> and then this is, so this is 2009. Uh, this was the last of the paper, paper maps that I have. I'm not sure if there were a, further additions that were I think made. There was a 2011 print run, but it was not substantially different from the 2009 edition. Gotcha. Um, I just, I wanted to show this one because uh, I thought th this was very thoughtful uh, again mm -hmm. uh, to the, to the maps uh, committee um, to, to put this little thing in here, use caution when crossing Cresham Creek, several bridges have been damaged by recent flooding. Uh, 2004 Hurricane yeah. Jeannie came through and totally obliterated the Cresham Valley and washed out three bridges in one storm. Um, and uh, it's it's and so here it's marked that. And I think we've to, only had one brought back that um, was destroyed. That's right, uh, that's right. And that one is up here, like kind of where that bike is. Mm -hmm. um, but this one uh, was washed out. This, this yes. one washed out. And then the white trail, um, you also have to you still have to ford that creek at that location. Correct. So then, twenty thirteen. We have the what's basically the current version. Um, there was the change to the Yupo paper, the recycled rubber. Um, you can also put it over your head in a rainstorm. <laughs> and, very, uh, but it also doesn't fall apart in the rain, which was one of the features that we thought was good. That's right, which is why you can put it over your head. Yes. Um, <laughs> very, very durable uh, material. Uh, and also a new design, totally new design. Um, Ruffian, was this was this Christian who who did this? Uh, this one was actually um, a graphic designer um, from a firm called Kelsch Wilson. Worked uh, with our um, internal project manager Henry Stroud, who's uh, was with us um, from 2011 to 2016. Um, and I think that was this first edition. I believe Christian has done, uh, from 
Route 29 design and, and does a lot of uh, FOW's uh, graphic design now um, has worked on that. But this, I think, predates that. And this one may be a first pass at um, going more with, is this the, the one with the topography versus the contour lines? Yeah, that's right. Um, the so actually, you know what, I, I should correct myself. I think this is the 2014 or maybe even 15 version because the 2013 one did not have topo on it. Um, and that was added in later. Yes. Um, and so I think this one does include that, which we'll see here as we get in. A little okay, closer. so this one does have the, the contour lines and um, people really value having that. So those are those were brought back after uh, just going with the topographical shading. Right, right. That's right. Yeah, the 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 contours uh, are are definitely very helpful, and and it's interesting. So so this one uh, says you know so yellow trail, excuse me, follows Summit Avenue. Um, that is noted here, and again, um, the uh, uh, volunteers and uh, crew leaders um, with a little bit of professional help rerouted this to come here and cross this stream, and then kind of come along here. And then go yes. back in here. So uh, future editions of the map will uh, reflect that. Um, but so talking about the north and south thing and Henry Stroud and and the the maps that FOW produced in 2013 moving forward. Um, yeah. So these were part of um, a park wide uh, wayfinding and signage system. Um, and uh, funded uh, with uh, some uh, state grants that FOW was able to apply for, as, as well as private um, matching funds. So the whole project was, I think, almost $500,000. And um, a lot of these kiosks, this is what we call a, a primary entrance. And so for primary entrances in the Wissahickon Valley Park, you see the three paneled kiosk. Um, and that gives you the directory, the info, as well as some information about stewardship. And uh, but each park entrance, whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary, um, always has this park information panel, and really presents uh, the park in context to where you are at this particular point. So sometimes you'll see it horizontal, and sometimes you'll see it in my preferred orientation of north-south, which again is how I always picture the park in my mind. So. It can be a little disorienting <laughs> if you are expecting a north-south thing. Um, sure. So when you arrive at the kiosk, just look for the north arrow to uh, to orient yourself. Um, but yeah, that's why I wanted to include this one because that's it's kind of an interesting thing to look at this familiar shape, but from a different angle. Um, and <laughs> 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 so then we have the, the pocket maps um, I, I, on our computer screens. They're much larger than um, uh, real life. Uh, but the, this big lighter here is for scale, obviously. Sure. Uh, the, but it does fit in your pocket. It does. It does fit in your pocket. So this was uh, 2017, I believe, is when the pocket maps. Yes, 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, they came out. Um, and... Um, Again, there is that shape that we recognize um, and it fits in your pocket. And it's kind of cool to see the Andorra natural area get its own little uh, yes. uh, inset here, which will serve as a segue. Um, there's the Andorra natural area a little closer in and you can see all of the named trails here. <clears throat> I'm a big fan of the Gnome Trail. A good one. The Gnome Trail is a good one. Um, oh, and then... Um, the map app. Recent edition, the map app. Uh, that's right. Download so, it. Go to the iOS store. Go to the Android store, if that's what it's called, and download it and Google use Play. it. There's two versions in here, people. I'm sorry, I have to plug it. We're so proud of it. A big shout out to our communications team, our, our director of development, Sarah Marley, and Noah Kulak, our communications assistant, for uh, pulling this off very quickly in 2020 as we were trying to um, really uh, connect with folks, uh, so many new uh, visitors as well as, you know, longtime visitors who, who couldn't get their hands on the paper map and we couldn't mail it to them. So we, we found a way to get it into your pocket. Uh, 
and it's a great tool with lots of excellent content as well. So take it away, Brett. That's, That's right. Favorite. Like <laughs> such as um, these things over here. So um, there are two ways you can view the map. Um, you can view the outdoor map, which uh, most of us call a Google map. Um, yes. And this one, this one you only need just the very slightest of um, signal for, as, you, as most of us find with Google, as long as you have something, uh, you can see it. But as we all know in the Wissahickon, um, sometimes you don't even have just, just the teensiest bit of signal, in which case, um, if you plan ahead, you can have essentially that same map that you showed in the pocket map or the, the uh, previous paper version. Um, this is the PDF that made those maps and you can have that in your phone. Um, and if you uh, take advantage of, of pulling that down into your app before you head out, you have it with you. And it, it doesn't need a signal if it's, if it's in your app, so get it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, it's, it's pretty great. So you can, you can view it as a Google map or you can view the actual FOW map as seen here. Um, you've got all of the, the trail heads uh, as one option, points of interest here. Um, and then there's like alerts. If there, if there is an alert, um, it will populate on your map also. So this is the Lincoln Drive Trail Bridge Closure, um, which will be over soon. Yes. Um, A nine then, to 12 month project that uh, 12 months will be in March and the project managers feel that it is on track. And so that's... Um, It'll be very excellent when it is reopened. That's right. Solid. That's right. And the city is investing in infrastructure, which we want them to do, and they are doing yep. that. So that is a great thing. Um, and then, yeah, there's other, you know, and so when you when you zoom in a little bit, you can tap on the various uh, uh, points of interest. So you've got the, the frog pond here, and then you can learn about- That's such a beautiful pond. spot too. It is. It's, 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 it's super cool. Um, yeah. So- so the map app. Um, let's see. So it's 7-Eleven. I'm gonna I'm gonna speed this up a little bit here. So other ways they can map. So that was the FOW section. Um, <laughs> all right. Oh, this this is oh, one dear. one last FOW thing. Um, this is a beautiful one. It's really cool. FOW um, published uh, it's sort of a collector's booklet um, throughout the 60s and in the early 70s, and this was the centerfold, and this was a hand-drawn map by uh, George W. Sommer down here. Um, and it's, 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 it's really cool. And, and, and to, to picture that in like 1960, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I just, I kind of love it. I, I kind of love it. I like that the letters look like they're um, pieces of wood or, you know, branches. Yes, very well thought out by George W. Sommer. Um, so here is, uh, the, so, so we, we talked a minute ago about, uh, the Andorra natural area inset on the pocket map. Uh, so here is, uh, uh, Philadelphia parks and recreations, uh, own map at the Wissahickon environmental center, AKA mm -hmm. the tree house. Um, and, uh, it's just, it's kind of cool, you know, cause, cause the, they have their own little subset of trails um it's really a teaching forest here so um you know the environmental center is such a so one of three that uh philadelphia has um and is such a great resource for kids and their families so big shout out there to our our friends at WEC and their yeah. creative naming of trails <laughs> and they've been a real partner um with fow as we've work through the years to steward the area and think about um, the best trail alignments and where we can have restoration, what we need to keep open and um, managing the building there. So it's a great, a great section of the park. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, it's, and it's so wild that like, this is all like really dense forest, but the, but the forest has a lot of uh, exotic trees because it was yes. a nursery. nursery. It, was, it was a nursery. And like the Cedars House Cafe is surrounded by cedar trees. Like, <laughs> wow, okay, I get it now. You know, and then you've got this <laughs> meadow with these amazing like, you know, sunset views and yes. it's, it's pretty great. 
So here's another inset, Carpenter's Woods, uh, you know, all part of the contiguous Wissahickon mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. watershed and parkland um, and friends of Carpenter's Woods uh, made this map. Uh, th this, this one is from 2016, but it has evolved uh, as the park trails have evolved a little bit over there. Mm -hmm. um, this is historic. This Britain was breaking Hotel. news. We broke this on a Valley Talk a few weeks ago with Amy <laughs> Ritchie. Right. We were the first to share the new map of historic Rittenhouse Town. I love it. That's right. That's right. Um, so well done to Amy and uh, historic Rittenhouse Town for uh, updating this really cool little, you know, kind of cartoon. Yeah, uh, but also map. giving us the ghost buildings, you know, really. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting to see the how the density has uh, evolved and and what used to be there. So yeah, that yeah, that's right. And and it's really cool. I mean, it's really cool to see them these old ghost buildings where Lincoln Drive, you know, uh, uh, you know, again, Philadelphia demolished a lot of buildings to create these roads. Um, and um, they th this map kind of puts them into their place here. And it's also uh, worth looking at the, so McKinney Quarry over here. Mm -hmm. This was the quarry loop that the, that is now a mountain bike skills course um, that was built just over the last couple of years, um, and and to see this all in one place in the but it really the, puts the kind of depression uh, that's in the earth there into context as you're trying to figure out exactly um, what's going on here with the hillside. That's right. We dug it out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, um, so this have, is, go ahead. Well, so, sorry. Yeah, this, this is our friends, uh, upstream in Montgomery right. County, uh, formerly known as Wissahickon Valley Watershed Association, which they were known as when they created this map mm -hmm. of the green ribbon trail in 1979, uh, shout out to AutoCAD, uh, circa 1979. Um, <laughs> this is a, uh, it's it's cool it is a yeah. cool map i really yeah. did this map um you know well, and you really you really right. see kind of you know we're so familiar with our section down here the lower seven miles or so um of the creek uh but how how many townships and and neighborhoods it's passing through before it even gets to philadelphia and how many people are um impacting the watershed so yeah, yeah, that, and that's 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 always an interesting point when considering the work that they do, um, you know, because like FOW and Parks and Rec are so fortunate to to work together, kind of hand in hand, where mm -hmm. uh, WVWA has to work with what, what is it like fifteen or sixteen something like that, uh, different municipalities, different sure. boroughs, different townships, you know, it's crazy. And, and yeah. we've done some work to preserve to preserve land. Um, and I think uh, for folks that love maps, I think they came out with 12 or so of their different preserves last year. And so if you go to um, their website, which I think is wissahickentrails.org, but right. um, uh, you can probably find the, how to get those paper maps. Uh, yeah, when. it might even look something like this. It might. <laughs> So this one over here on the left was the previous version um, mm -hmm. that they had. This, this was just like the little brochure, but they had a, a, a bigger map that kind of opened up. Um, but this is their most recent version, um, which I think it, I, I may have, the, it was either last year or this year that they, uh, they rolled this version out. And as Ruffian just mentioned, they have uh, little sub maps of the different, you know, different little parts um, that they, uh, the different, um, preserves that they manage um, that are all sort of depicted over here. Um, and but some it, in our connections are going to get a little bit better probably in the next few years as those uh, that kind of um, piece that needs to take us from Northwestern Avenue, um, a, you know, along Erdenheim Farm and then and then to the Green Ribbon Trail is finally completed. So yes, uh, no doubt there'll be good. updates to both maps at that point. <laughs> That's right. And we are all very Super much excited. Looking, Super excited. Very much looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to pull this out of the of the most recent update of their map that they have. Um, not only that they have their their foot crossings, um, the um, you know the stepping stones. Uh, they they not only have them delineated, but they have the little icon for them. So uh, there, I think there are seven or eight of the uh, 
of the stepping stone crossings on the Green Ribbon Trail, and they and they have their own little icon here, which is yeah. kind of nice. And that's those those are really fun. Yeah. Um, so again, just trying to speed things up here. Uh, this is uh, 1995. The Fairmount Park Commission did a, a trails master plan, mm -hmm. um, and there are several versions of the parkland that we have here. And this is this is something that's so awesome about maps. And this is you know again it goes back to when I was like five years old. I love maps. Maps <laughs> are where art and science intersect. You can look at the same thing a hundred different ways and it will still be the same thing but have a hundred different narratives and it's just so it's I, it's, I mean, it's, it's maps man it's maps it's cool so brad um, I'm, I'm wondering we have um we had we were peaking at about uh, 96 people and we're, we have 79 folks we've had a few questions here i thought we might um maybe i can pepper you with questions and if if you feel like every few seconds you want to change the slide and and just show something and and people get a little taste and um, i'm not sure how many how many more maps there are but um what do you how do you feel about that yeah pepper away okay so there's there's two questions that i certainly don't know the answer to off the top of my head or even know if they're you know uh, but we could certainly consider in the future someone asking about um, Lenape, any known Lenape maps. Um, I think that would that would be a question for further research, um, unless you had the answer to that. I, I feel like if you had something, you would have included it. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I I wish um, yeah. if that exists, um, I would love to see it. I I am not aware of that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the Lenape uh, committed to paper. paper. Yeah, I, I, uh, or I think um, in general, the wayfinding and, and technique and perhaps naming would be an interesting uh, talk, but certainly I'm not the expert in that. Um, but I just wanted to uh, make sure that question was asked. Another one about the best existing map that designates the small tributaries to the Wissahickon. I think um, most of the tributaries to the Wissahickon are fairly well labeled on even the Google Maps today, um, except for perhaps ones that are um, no longer uh, no longer really tributaries, and now they're sewers or um, submerged. Well. So this slide here, this is from 2007. The Philadelphia Water Department did a huge study. It was a master uh, study of uh, the, the Wissahickon Creek Watershed Comprehensive Characterization Report. Right. Um, and uh, it gets it, it, it breaks the, the entire Wissahickon watershed into sub watersheds. And that's what this middle map is here. Mm -hmm. um, and so Google has some. And so just so folks know, the watershed, you know, the sub watersheds or micro watersheds or, or the big watershed are all where the water's draining to. So when we talk about these sub watersheds, that would be kind of the first place water's draining to. And then from there, it's to the Wissahickon, from the Wissahickon to the Schuylkill. Huh. So yes. That's right. Um, and, and so these these sub watersheds, so Cresham Creek is easy to kind of, you know, wrap your head around because mm -hmm. Cresham uh, is is kind of wild. It's wild. There are trails, there's trees and creek and so forth. Um, but but some of the other sub watersheds, um, you know, Gorgas is another one. Gorgas is another one that's like easy to easy to recognize. Um, but then there are some of the smaller ones that that may or may not have names um and that's where this map is kind of handy uh because it breaks them down into what the uh water department refers to the map uh, as and so you know so this like this brown one is the monoshone the green one is carpenter uh cresham you know and you can you can take it like all the way up here this big teal one is sandy run which is the largest tributary of the Wissahickon Creek, um, but it is it's it's in uh, Montgomery County, and yes. you can see that the uh, Pennsylvania Turnpike uh, passes right through there. 
and you know all of the considerations that go with the, the roads and the suburban development and all of that. And so this is this is really kind of an interesting way to look at it. Um, and and the sub watersheds are sort of they're they're labeled over here. Okay. Um, so, um, we have yeah. more questions. Sure. So PWD uh, has great mapping. Um, uh, on the watersheds, uh, all for the whole watershed. So this is not just, we're not just looking at Philadelphia here, but the whole Wissahickon watershed. Um, and they, I believe they did these also for some of the other um, uh, watersheds in the city, the full characterization. Um, maybe not all in 2007, but maybe. Um, so this off the topic of the tributaries and over to 1936, Someone said that uh, they noticed Lincoln Drive continues north after crossing Allen's Lane. How far up did it go? The plan for Lincoln Drive was to continue it north through Allen's Lane, connected to the Lincoln Drive that exists in Chestnut Hill. Um, but in a, I, I'm not sure if it was the Great Depression of the 30s that prevented its continuation, but uh, Lincoln Drive was only built to Allen's Lane in Mount Airy. And from Allen's Lane uh, north to, you know, to, to where Lincoln Drive picks back up in Chestnut Hill is now the Cresham Trail. And again, credit to fr friends of Cresham Trail, they built these little, um, Tr this ne this network of trails uh, that goes down. And if you take the one that goes closest to Cresham Valley Drive, you can see some of the retaining wall that was built to support what would have been uh, Lincoln Drive through that area. So just picture Lincoln Drive as we know it now. Um, you know, it's basically a highway from Ridge Avenue to, let's say, Wayne Avenue, and then it becomes residential, but it's still four lanes, and it's still pretty traffic heavy. That would have continued all the way into Chestnut Hill. Um, and at a certain point, it would have connected to this. And this is the proposal of the Chestnut Hill Bryn Mawr Road, um, which goes back to the late 1800s when Henry Houston, you know, very, very wealthy Pennsylvania Railroad magnate uh, and uh, was it Sam, Samuel Cassatt um, on, in the, on the main line, they wanted to connect their big wealthy suburbs and their big wealthy interests. And in a way that has never actually happened. But for decades, there was a plan to build a road from Ardmore or Bryn Mawr uh, all the way to Chestnut Hill over here. Hmm. And it what, what that road would have done is it would have, uh, well, okay, sorry. So this is the Schuylkill River here. So this road would have followed uh, the Mill Valley, which is mm -hmm. now, uh, what is it? Rolling Hill Park, I think in Lower Marion. Uh, it would have come up through, uh, like the thing, I think the Schuylkill Environmental Center is like basically right around in here. Okay. Um, and then, so you see Ridge Avenue and Henry Avenue here. It would have come across and then gone right through the Wissahickon Park on a bridge and then come over and connected with Graver's Lane and then over here, this is Lincoln Drive. This is Graver's Lane. So Lincoln Drive, Bethlehem Park, and this new park drive would have connected over here at Pastorius Park, which would have become a traffic circle. So if you've ever been to Pastorius Park, just picture a traffic circle of three Lincoln Drive type roads. I'm glad connecting. that didn't happen. <laughs> Chestnut Hill, yes. not let that happen. <laughs> All right, um, we have uh, one more question about um, why Paul's Mill Road was changed to Bell's Mill Road. And um, also uh, someone who says they don't have a question, but think you've done a fantastic job tonight. 
uh, was uh, something submitted. Thank you. I'm going to let you answer that question. That's going to be the last question. And then we're going to say good night to everybody. But okay. I did have a question for me and I misspoke. Don't search for FOW map on in the app store. You want to search for Wissahickon Park Map app. Just put in Wissahickon and you'll find us. Um, okay, so take it away. Do you know the answer why Bell's or Paul's Mill Road was changed to Bell's Mill Road? Uh, just changing ownership. So okay. Paul's Mill, I'm not sure who was he first. He sold the mill. Paul sold the mill to Bell? Well, Paul, I think, sold the mill to Thorpe, and then Thorpe sold the mill to Bell. That okay. is, I, that's, that's, that's my guess. I, I don't know that for 100% certain, but that's what it was. It was, it was, it was changing, um, it was changing ownership. Changing um, ownership. And there's a, sm there's a small handful of, uh, of other examples, uh, examples like that. Um, Carpenter's Lane was, uh, I think, Trullinger's Lane. Okay. Um, you we know. might have to save some of this for um, another talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, um, well, I, I'm the, the, the speed oh, round. Sarah now. West. Here's Sarah West. This, I just want to shout long out time, Sarah West. Former FOW board member, longtime FOW trail ambassador, teacher of uh, geology to many uh, a student, and um, obviously someone who has put a, a book together here that has a map in it. That's right. This is her 2003 book, um, and I just wanted to put that little that little map in there because there is a Wissahickon map, and it is Sarah West's book. Um, and Sarah, if you're watching tonight, you're awesome. Um, thank you. Um, this is Jason Killinger's map. Jason Killinger is um, he he is the front man of the band Spacen, and uh, he's in the, the Birds of Maya, and he's an amazing illustrator. He did this map for uh, Mascar Design, um, it was their calendar for, for the year 2008. And it's just sort of, it, th this is a restrained version of the type of art that Jason does. Um, mm. It's really cool. Um, Cooper O'Neill uh, is a stained glass artist. He did these topo maps of the Wissahickon that, that are on display at the Cedars house. Um, really cool. He did them in like red and blue, and I think in clear. Um, uh, Jim Charnock and uh, the late Jerry Schweiger, they put this um, sort of utilitarian map of Forbidden Drive together. Um, oh, <laughs> and here's a map that I did. Uh, nice. If end, if we can end on this. Um, so I think this that's is just, a... Just, <laughs> yeah, I, I did this with, uh, with Sharpies. I'm a big fan of Sharpies, but um, uh, I don't know. Anyway. Um, oh, you know what? No, 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 sorry. I don't want to end there because I, I want to go to Philogeo history. I want people to, if you're not familiar with it already, already uh, do go to philogeohistory.org um, because as you can see on the right, there's all these layers here um, that you can, you, you put an address in, pull it up, and you can just look through different layers of time. And that is the beauty of maps. Maps tell lots of stories and my stories are done. Thank you. Okay. Philly Geo History. Very exciting, folks. Check it out. Uh, you can click through time um, and see, see, see many, many, many more maps and some of the maps you may have seen tonight. Brad, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for listening and, and being a part of it. Um, and I'm sure we will have, if you have a question that wasn't answered and you want to send it in that same form anyway, uh, we can look to either answer them perhaps um, at FO Wissahickon or um, on our e-news or any other place uh, that we feel like we might reach you with that. And um, I am going to say good night to everybody. So yes, good night, everybody. And, and uh, also, don't forget to follow FOW on Instagram. It is FO Wissahickon. And John Jensen, I see you you marking up this map here. <laughs> Sam, sorry, that is how that happened. So, so shout out to John Zen John Jensen for uh, for 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 tagging up our uh, our, our maps here. Uh, <laughs> seriously, thank you all for for uh, for joining tonight and for sticking through this ninety minutes. Thank you, Ruffian, for uh, allowing me to to do this. Um, well, thank you for putting this together. I think everyone really enjoyed it. I know I did. So, you have a great evening. Everyone else have a wonderful night and. Uh, 
we'll see you next year when Valley Talks start again in 2022. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye.